Hi and welcome to another Wednesday with Vilna today and even though the video is up a little later than usual it's still Wednesday so better late than never right so today we're going to be painting with acrylic paint and if you look in the related products uh, on my blog you will see I linked the exact colors that I used here and I squeezed a little bit out on a little palette and what I'm doing now is basically testing if I like the color palette. And I think it's quite important to me because I've just jumped in and done quite a few things in the past. And in the end, I didn't like the color palette. So lately, I just try it out and um, see if I like it. And I did. I loved the colors here. So... Next up, I'm going to be using the cut file that I have available in iHeartStudio.ca. You can see all the leaves. And I'm basically going to be painting these leaves with acrylic paint. And I cut these on Canson watercolor paper. I did a double cut. And you can see how easily and how beautifully they lift off the cutting mat. Perfect cuts and I'm super happy with how they turned out. I have a bundle available on iHeart Studio where you can buy printables, the cut files and the words. So now we're going to paint them and I'm just laying them out in little rows because I'm going to be using an ombre like I did in the test page just from light to dark. So we're going to start off with yellow and I want the colors to overlap. And the idea is to have uh, two colors on every leaf. So that's the thinking right now. We'll see how it turns out. Right, next up, I'm just going to paint it. And I used a little bit of washi to secure the background paper, just to make sure it doesn't all move. And now you, you can even use a bigger brush than I did. And just hold them lightly and paint. So I'm putting my little taste there so I can see exactly the progression of the colors. And I'm not overthinking it, I'm just going to paint it.
Right, and when you're done painting, be sure to lift it off the page while it's still wet. I think even with the yellow ones on the top, I waited too long because the, it will stick to the papers and then you'll have a problem to lift it off and it will tear. So you don't want that to happen. So I'm just lifting them off with a craft knife and just placing them on another piece of paper. And even then I had to move them around a bit to make sure they didn't stick to the paper. But I like uh, the effect of the acrylic paint and it was quite fun to do. And it takes a while for it to dry. So you have to just be patient a little. You can see that one was stuck already. The next thing that I did was I printed uh, the words out on a piece of paper through my silhouette and you can see the registration marks there because I'm going to cut them. So this is before I cut them and this is after I cut them using the print and cut feature of the silhouette. I'm amazed every single time when I um, do a print and cut just to see how awesome it works. And the reason why the A and the G right at the top didn't cut was because it bordered on the gray area of the print and cuts registration marks. So just make sure that um, there's nothing touching the registration markings and then you'll be good. But you can see how absolutely gorgeous it worked. So, and I used the word autumn because I know in South Africa and Australia and Europe you don't talk uh, about fall, you talk about autumn and we also, I'm South African so autumn is very meaningful to me as well but then I decided to do fall because most of North America refer to the season as fall and not autumn and then I did two even the leaves fall for you because it's just such a sweet sentiment and uh, there's two versions of it. So yeah, so I'm just basically getting rid of any um, possible paint that's left on the die cut because now I'm impatient and my time is running out. And I'm just using a paper towel for that. So you can just put them through that quickly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw with white ink on the leaves. You can see I used a pen, but it didn't nearly have the effect that I wanted. So I'm taking um, speed pull pigmented, pigment, mint, that word. Um, pigment acrylic ink that's the real name of it and I'm going to be painting on it so I got the ink the white ink at Michaels and if you don't have ink and you don't want to spend money on it this at all then just use some acrylic paint white acrylic paint and you mix it with a little bit of water and I'm sure it will basically do the exact same thing okay so the trick to paint uh, the lines or the veins on the leaves is to do it in one fell swoop. So you just want to hold your breath, breathe in and paint. So that's how it works. So if you do it slow, you're going to run into speed wobbles and just try it. I'm not kidding you. Um, the quicker you work, the, the more pretty it looks. So that's basically just <laughs> my advice my very professional advice to you and um, it was quite fun actually and I love the look on it I think it blended the colors or muted it a little and I just love the general look of the white on the leaves so I'm going to forward this part a little you can see there I hit a speed wobble but you, even then you can make it work and just carry on I guess so I'm going to forward this and just show you quickly how I drew 
with white ink on all the leaves. I really wish I could work this fast in real life. I know I said it every time, but when I see it on a video like this, I'm a, I always think, wow, that would be my superpower. Imagine that. Um, so almost done with um, drawing on the leaves. And now we're going to make our page. So I'm starting off with this photograph of Kirsten. And if you are very sharp in the Sherlock Holmes, then you'll notice it's almost the exact same photo I used last week. But like I've said before, I don't mind using the same photo over and over again. Um, I work, I make too many scrapbook pages for the actual photos that I have. But anyway, so that's beyond the point. So now next tip, I'm taking Tull. And this is a roll again that I bought from Michaels. And I have three little um, links and I'm folding it in half. So now uh, I'm thinking, how am I going to tear it? And then I decided to just um, stitch it down with uh, my machine. So I took out my machine and I just ran it through super quick. And really, this is the easiest way, in my mind, to adhere tall to um, a layout, is just to quickly stitch it down. So I had a little mishap there where the tall got stuck in my needle, but it's because I'm in too much of a hurry. So just take a deep breath, don't be in a hurry, and it will, be, it will work out good. So... You can see it just folded, but I didn't quite, didn't bother me that much because I'm going to be covering it over, up with leaves as well. And it really helps if you put a new um, bullet, like I like to call it in my glue gun. So, yeah. So now I'm going to be adhering the leaves and I'm going to start from the one side and I'm just going to add them and... And layer them and I'm going to go from light to dark except that I'm going to add one light one on one side and one dark one on the other side but you'll see that in the end what I love about the tall is that it lifts up the leaves so it's not flat against the white paper And I'm going to forward this part because it's really quite simple. Uh, I'm just going to use some hot glue and adhere it. And once you've adhered it, um, I'm going to add my title. And I'm going to use the word autumn. And I decided to just place it a little lower on the page because then there was room for some journaling above and beneath it. So I'm using a little bit of hot glue and I'm just going to follow the contours of the word with it. And then I'm just going to lightly place it down right there. I love the touch of pink um, that the tall gives as well as the pink leaves. And you can see that I used one of Chamel's background papers. And I'm going to um, just, that's going to be my background. And then this beautiful again the um, little frames by crate paper and I'm adding one of Kirsten's other photos inside there and I'm just going to adhere it and that just gives it a little bit of makes it interesting and fascinating and it makes it a two photo layout which is always good so I'm just going to stick it down with a little bit of hot glue don't tell anyone that I'm using hot glue on my photos um, it's just my secret to keep and I'm just going to squeeze it down because of all the dimension behind it. And just the other li little frame. And that's just for decoration. It's coming together quite nice. Uh, then I decided I really want some ink splatters on it. it. It's just some pages ask for it a little bit more than others. So I'm covering up my photos and I'm going to use a teal 
ink splatter and I'm doing the teal just to contrast the orange and yellows a little. Now it's the exact same ink that I, it's also a pigmented um, acrylic ink and it's the exact same one as the white, it's just in a teal. And in my art and design class that's running right now, um, the students that is in there know that this is my favorite new discovery. So I love this ink. And I used um, a beautiful pen by Chamel uh, in a gray that you'll see in a second. And I'm going to do my journaling with that. And I love that gray pen. Thank you, Chamel, for making, for forcing American crafts to make a gray pen. And it's lovely because it's just enough subtleness and, and perfection, I think. It's also a nice sharp point, so it really writes so lovely. And I'm making sure that my hands are not smearing the teal wet paint drops. So that's important. And then once that's done, I'm just going to stamp with my Heidi Swap favorite date stamp right now. Uh, the date. And that's it. And there you have the page is done. And I absolutely love it. I had it up in my scrapbook room and when Kirsten saw it, she just absolutely loved it. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.